can I speak first because you know I have to go. Uh, I have to 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 animate another you are, you are conference. Yes, great. So, Alex, I will I will tell you three three keywords that resume oh, how you conference. Don't tell me, it's okay. Who needs to know? I will, I will discover okay. it on direct. Okay. Okay. Live in three, two, one. Right, so um, uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, short 10-minute uh, wrap-up uh, session. I'm sure you had uh, as interesting and fascinating uh, discussions uh, as uh, our workshop definitely was. Um, but we're going to have uh, three wrap-ups in two minutes each, just so that you know some of the themes uh, which were uh, touched on uh, by uh, speakers. Uh, so I'm um, delighted to have with us uh, Gilbert Azoulay, who so I used to know as a journalist 25 years ago on the RFI. Uh, so, <laughs> hi, uh, Gilbert, uh, can you give us a two minutes, uh, two minutes, a summary of what happened in your workshop? Gilbert. Yes, uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, let's speak about tomorrow and the keywords of higher ed. It, is, it, it was the, the themes of how conference digital. Uh, we are living in a technical revolution. If it's not the main questions, it's a big issue for university. In all over Europe, all over the world, they have to invest massively and to propose a new way of learning anywhere at any time. We understand the value of peer-to-peer -peer and the necessity of online resources. Second keyword, new organization, new mindset among teachers and students. For all this community, there is a new perspective. Students are now actors of uh, their university courses and teachers are more like coaches for, to drive their students to knowledge and employability. This, news, uh, this new mindset drives us to mix disciplines and also to create a community between initial and professional education. There is a continuum, as we used to say. And the third key point, uh, impact and search of purpose. Students on all the higher ed community wants to know the impact of their actions, impact on planet Earth, impact on for their today's life, and how I can help make things better uh, and not to make it worse. I think it's a big issue, a big question for all the students. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Merci, Gilbert. Thank you very much indeed. You certainly set the tone in terms of the dynamic, uh, short uh, resume of what happened in your uh, workshop. I'm delighted now to hand over to uh, Kate Daubney. Uh, Kate, in, in two minutes, if you could give us uh, a taste of uh, some of the uh, things, the experiences that, uh, that you've been talking about. Kate. Thank you very much. So I think many common themes that uh, attendees will recognise and we were considering um, portfolio education and how our higher education institutions might seize the opportunity. And I think one might immediately think of disruption and perhaps think of it as a negative thing. But in fact, notwithstanding perhaps some bureaucratic structures in universities that may need to be refreshed. And I think a really strong emphasis on culture change, institutions understanding that their role is going to be different in a portfolio of educational qualifications, micro-credentials, open badges that really force us to think quite differently about how education and learning are constructed. And recognition and validation was quite a key part of that conversation. So opportunity, opportunity for institutions, but also opportunity for students and this opportunity to co-create. So this idea of collaborative learning between educators and students. This also emphasis on curation, students perhaps being uh, needing quite a bit of support to help them curate perhaps quite interdisciplinary programs that draw together different areas of interest. And thinking then, how is that received by an employer? How might that be perceived externally? And one of our speakers suggested that this is already happening quite strongly where students just create the program that they want. But context still very, very important. And also trying to move ourselves away in how we understand learning and knowledge as perhaps away from a deficit model and more towards something that's about adding and recognizing what is already there and the importance of doing that in a holistic and quite inclusive fashion. So I think enormous opportunity, that would be a key theme. Um, emancipation was one word mentioned by one of our speakers, which I thought was very inspiring. It's about giving control and, and opportunity to all. 
Okay, thank you very much indeed for that uh, a very dynamic uh, resume. Um, as regards uh, the workshop that uh, I was lucky enough to uh, be participating in, we had uh, Thibault uh, Duchesne from the CNAM who uh, talked about uh, the slight problem there is in France with the meritocracy uh, system uh, that uh, tends to favour the, 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 the big towns and how the CNAM has been very dynamic, uh, especially over the last uh, year or so in helping um, a small, uh, smaller uh, towns uh, with uh, less uh, geographical uh, mobility, where there's an, often a lack of uh, training uh, possibilities. It's important, as a Thibault, to work with uh, local uh, politicians uh, and to work with the French uh, government uh, in order to get these uh, towns uh, on board. There have been 30 uh, new uh, centres open since 2019. We heard also from uh, Ezan uh, University Jordana, uh, who uh, talked about mille doctorants pour les territoires, how to get uh, young people the possibility of working uh, at a local uh, level and studying there, the number of young researchers doing their research uh, in municipalities. 14 thousand uh, grants, uh, state grants uh, have been uh, given uh, to local authorities. Uh, Jordana referred to this as Tinder for um, PhD uh, students, which is exactly what it is uh, to uh, put people into uh, uh, contact. Ezam has been working on a, a, a project, a network uh, since 2017, putting local authorities in touch with uh, PhD students. And then we had uh, a, a very in uh, interesting Chase initiative uh, from Stephen uh, Colborne uh, between the uh, possibilities uh, in in London and the uh, south uh, of uh, uh, England, also e East Andia. Uh, this was coordinated by the University uh, of Sussex and started in 2014 and uh, concerns arts and humanity. Uh, students. Uh, he gave us some concrete examples of some of the things that, uh, uh, that Chase has been involved in, for example, feminist networks and also uh, climate change uh, initiatives. And uh, also talk briefly about some of the international uh, aspects. Uh, there have been other examples, uh, for example, uh, in South Africa. Uh, and how Chase has helped uh, students to uh, uh, to get to the, uh, work at the BBC uh, with Barclay and Tierra uh, Digna. Uh, so um, it's also my role, I think, to sum up the whole day. What an interesting uh, approach we've all had to the work world of tomorrow. Thank you to all of us. Uh, who have uh, taken uh, part, all of you who've uh, been uh, listening today and to the, uh, the uh, presenters. What a new world we have. I, for one, don't know what VUCA was. Um, and uh, uh, an amazing uh, set of uh, challenges, uh, but also, I think, as we've seen, to, uh, seen today, quite a lot of interesting uh, initiatives uh, which uh, which are out there uh, whenever the world gets back to normal or perhaps that's the exciting thing what the new normal is. Thank you very much to all the organizers uh, of today to uh, ESAM Université, to the British Council and to the University of London Institute uh, in Paris wherever you're watching us. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup et au revoir. Goodbye. Au revoir.